Restart Democracy is a nonprofit dedicated to researching ways to improve voting and uh, democracy in general. And one of the first areas that I focused on as the primary focus right now of the organization is on internet voting, uh, trying to find a way to investigate secure internet voting to see if that's a possibility and a way to fix some of the problems in democracy. Uh, and so when Bitcoin bubbled up, it, at least when it crossed my path, maybe two years ago at first, and then again, you know, obviously when it ran up to 250 and caught everyone's attention, I started thinking about it differently and maybe it could serve as a model for how to do internet voting. I have some concerns about the blockchain. Um, so it obviously acts as a public transaction log. Um, and one of the concerns with internet voting is that you don't want to give people a receipt for their vote. So you want them to know that their vote counted and have that be uh, mathematically demonstrable, but you don't want to give them a receipt so that they can prove to someone else how they voted. And so I, I have concerns that the blockchain maybe wouldn't serve that purpose as it's currently written. So the blockchain might act as a receipt, um, which would then allow for coercion. And, you know, the reason they instituted the secret ballot a hundred years ago was to get away from this vote buying and coercion and that kind of attack. So anyway, um, but broadly speaking, I think Bitcoin is very interesting in terms of a usable crypto system gaining a high level of popularity and public currency, basically. Uh, and I think that from that perspective, it has a lot of useful lessons for creating a secure internet voting system. Bitcoin does have some evolution built into the code base. I mean, it, it can change over time. And, you know, the zero coin um, add on or modification that's been proposed uh, to sort of increase the level of anonymity to Bitcoin, mm -hmm. um, I think serves as a good model for either how Bitcoin could evolve into a system that could support the full range of features that internet voting needs. I mean, there's also the potential that maybe society makes a decision that, you know, we're not as concerned about coercion as we were in the past. And so maybe we don't need a secret ballot in the same way we did over the last 100 years. That's not something that I would advocate for, but in the end, um, the voting system is, a consensus decision in some ways in the same way that uh, Bitcoin is. So if people decide that, you know, the uh, coercion isn't as much of a concern as it was in the past, then maybe Bitcoin would serve just fine as it is. Alternatively, it, it's possible to make modifications to Bitcoin um, such that it might work as an internet voting system and meet the coercion um, concerns ad and address those. I, I like a lot of the work that Julian Assange has done, and he describes cryptography as the ultimate uh, form of nonviolent direct action. And I think that people who are in favor of freedom and liberty see cryptography as, a, as critical to digital liberty. And more and more, it's becoming obvious that there isn't that much of a distinction to be made between digital liberty and liberty. You know, our lives are sort of blending into our digital lives and vice versa. And I think that if we're going to maintain some of the same important freedoms that we have today in the physical world, as we migrate into this blended um, online, offline existence that it seems clear that we're moving towards, then cryptography and other related tools 
seem absolutely necessary to me. Um, and it's not just about maintaining privacy, but it's about maintaining the types of communications that make of society that we sort of value possible. Uh, and I, I don't see a way to get there without having cryptography embedded in the sort of foundation of of what we're doing. I, I think just as a proof of concept that a crypto system can do really cool things like work as a currency, um, from that perspective, Bitcoin really is great because so many people over the last, you know, however long it's been, um, 20 years since the internet has been around and people started getting excited about uh, e currencies and all the way back to David Chom and his pioneering work in this area. Um, since none of that has come to pass in the way that people initially hoped that it would, it, it has been sort of this black mark on the early internet dreams that a lot of people had. And I think Bitcoin getting to the place that it has, even if for whatever reason, it fa if, if it were to fail tomorrow, it would still be a success from that point of view. And I think that Bitcoin has proven that there is a lot more value to crypto systems as currencies and potentially other things uh, in a way that locks that idea in place and it will be pursued even if Bitcoin does fail, something will come along to replace it. Um, and so I think that that is a great thing. And specifically with uh, respect to the role of government, you know, currency in the last whatever, 150 years, at least in the West and the US has been the domain of governments and something that in the Department of Treasury and those sorts of groups handle um, and so it's great to see an outside innovation come along and analogously voting has been the domain of governments and, you know, there hasn't been a lot of innovation with respect to voting in the same way that there hasn't been with currency over a hundred, 150 years. And so Bitcoin, I think is a good signal that we can get innovation in these really critical social systems without relying on government. And so that makes me hopeful for internet voting as well.